Hello, hello everybody and welcome. I'm Roger Pascal, and we're back with another Fireside Chat. Today we have somebody very special with us, Nick Lubbock. Uh, Nick is an investor here in Texas and Nick and I have been working together for a few months. So Nick, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, uh, you know, this is uh, this is awesome. I appreciate you being on here tonight. Thanks for uh, having we're going to talk about your journey into real estate. So this is a this is always a fun subject uh, when we're working with somebody that's been extremely successful in real estate, especially in the short amount of time that you have. So uh, we're going to we're going to get into this. But first thing we're going to talk about tonight is just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Nick, his wife, Sophie, and his four children, uh, along with a group of us, went to Cancun, Mexico for a real estate getaway. And tell us about that. Tell us what you thought about uh, the real estate getaway, Coach Bert, Dennis, everybody involved. It was great. Uh, it's my first time actually uh, going to Mexico. And we actually acquired our passports the day prior to leaving. So, you know, got to got to keep it last minute. So um, Coach Bert was was awesome. Uh, definitely, definitely, you know, re rewired some things just to kind of get you on the on the correct path there. But uh, more importantly, I think the a to B process that he talks about really, you know, streamlined some things for us. It, it, it really kind of puts you back on your goals that you've set for yourself. So I, I think it was awesome. 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 So tell us about you. Let's just jump right in and, and just tell us who you are. Okay. Well, born and raised in upstate New York in a, a little city called Rome near Syracuse. Um, I, I go to the next slide. I, my brother, he's two years older than me, Jay, he joined the Navy. Um, so we, he wanted to get out of the little town. So of course, when I got, when I finished high school, I joined the Navy. So he, uh, he got stationed in Virginia and the plan was we're going to work the system. I was going to join the Navy, get stationed in Virginia. And the, the Navy was going to pay for us to live out in town. So they have a, a basic housing allowance. And so he had a place and I was going to go stay with him. We we're going to split costs and collect the money. Right. And it didn't happen that way, of course. So the, the Navy didn't have the same plan you did. They didn't have the same plan. No, not at all. <laughs> and they never do really. So that's what were you even on the same continent? Yeah. And you know what? Funny story. Uh, the end of my Navy career, we were stationed in the same squadron together, which was a little, little cool thing there. Right. But uh, yeah, go ahead to the, the next slide. So there, there we are, are in the little red dot, upstate New York. Um, he was stationed right there in Virginia. And so you could see how close it would have been. You know, we'd go back home, you know, visit on the weekends, whatever it is. But instead... Next slide. They sent me over there. <laughs> not, not in the area, you know, it's a little funny up in that area. And it, we didn't also have to deal with the, uh, the South Southern California tent city. Next slide. Yeah. We didn't have to deal with that. We were actually in the center, which is like more agricultural in a, in the central Valley. And here's a little picture of what that area looks like. Go ahead, right there. Beautiful. So, what, so what happened? Uh, uh, why did Why didn't you stay on the East Coast? Why did you decide to go to the West Coast? So I, I didn't choose. Uh, so when when I finished my schooling, um, they basically they allow you to choose where you want to go. And so of course, uh, California was open, but there was a lot of Virginia orders, and I chose to go to Virginia to go, you know, to be with my brother and they, I chose Virginia and I got my orders like, you know, a couple days later, you're going to California. I was like, what the, you know, what do I do now? Like that's, that was my whole plan. My life is ruined. But uh, honestly, it's probably one of the best things that could have happened to me. I, I had so much fun there. And uh, even though I was on a Navy base, in the middle of the desert in a place called Lemoore, 
you know, it was still an incredible experience. So I got to meet a ton of great people and people I'm still friends with to this day. Another side uh, side note is one of the people I served with actually lives here in Tyler because I because I live here now. And wow. so he's actually in that picture. He's a guy to the far left. His, uh, Where are you at in this picture? I'm at the far right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I was running the radio for our, because we worked on the flight deck, so it, it's really loud and you have to, you know, you have to get calls and things like that while engines are turning and, you know, you're on an aircraft carrier. It was, honestly, it was, it was incredible, but I'm also glad I, I got out. Now, you were 11 years in the Navy, is that right? Yeah, 11 years. Yep. Wow. Was, and you were on a, were you on more than one carrier or? Yeah, we're. I was over the eleven years. I was on three carriers. Uh, we were on the Lincoln, which which was that carrier there, um, the Reagan and the Truman. And so we we're not always on carriers. That's only for when we get deployed or we are doing workups and 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 trainings and things like that. So. So you stayed on the presidential carriers. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> it, it didn't. It definitely was not like that. <laughs> I should show you where we slept and, and you just, you know, see those pictures. But yeah, so we got to travel a lot, of course. Um, I got to see some pretty cool places. Um, Thailand, you know, I'm sure you've heard some stories of that. Um, Bahrain, Dubai, you know, there's, there's many others. But among that and my time in the Navy, we learned a ton of valuable skills. So leadership. Um, they, they forced you to get uncomfortable, you know, which was, you know, one of the other things we talk about, but, uh, the deployments, uh, after, after I had a family, they became very difficult because now I'm leaving for months and at a time. And now I have to come back and, you know, um, try to try to work back in to, to integrate there. But on my last deployment, while we were underway, I read some books. Um, and specifically, the first one was uh, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, which is I have a picture of right here. Um, that one was the first book that kind of changed my way of thinking. So in between, in between flight ops, I'd be downstairs, uh, you know, reading the book. And I'm, I was just kind of you know, it was, it was a whole new world of thinking. And then I read, of course, like a lot of people, this next book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I'm sure most of your audiences read this, but I remember reading that book and then I, I was looking at everybody. I was like, what the hell am I doing here? And so I, I decided among other reasons, there was, a, there was so many reasons why I decided to get out, but um, this definitely, helped me a lot to, to just be like, you know what, I'm working so hard for the, the military where there is a cap, there's a ceiling. And no matter how hard I work, you, you cannot, you know, bust through that. So if I work this hard there, what if I work that hard for me? And what could my life then be like? And more importantly, my time would be my own instead of being on somebody else's time where I have to be away from my family for many months at a time and, you know, try to come back, you know, you know, these, you've heard the stories of, you know, people being along, being uh, gone for a long time and then coming home to their little children. And they'll, you know, it, it, it gets weird, you know, when you're trying to um, build that relationship back when they're very young, and they just don't know who you are, you know? So I, I called it quits. So I was like, yep, that's it. So I got to, wow. got to stick with them. Wow. But yeah. Made the decision after 11 years, I'm going to separate. A lot of people were like, what are you, you're halfway there. Just do it. You know? And, uh, I, no, nope. How old were you, how, how old were you, were your, would your daughters be? If you kept your 20 years, 25, whatever that, that time frame is. Man, they, so at 11, that was four years ago, they would be 14, maybe 15. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And 
that would be, you know, on and off there. So in the, in the Navy, you have shore duty and sea duty and sea duty is when you get deployed, but that's usually within four year span. Sometimes you're, you'll, you'll get deployed twice or maybe three times depending shore duty is all right because you know, you don't, you don't leave, but uh, either way you're, you're bound to the time of the Navy. If they want right. you to stay after work, you're staying after work. You know, there's no you know what you think? walk out, walk, walk off the carrier. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dive off real quick. Wow. So now tell us about your first deal. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess transitioning out of the Navy, um, I was supposed to work for Boeing and that was, that was my plan. Um, that didn't, that didn't work out. Um, they, they had some problem with the, the Boeing Max and they stopped hiring in that little window that I got out. And so I decided to start wholesaling because it was something that I was reading on and I didn't fully know how to do it. I just knew, you know, step one, get a house under contract, make a deal, you know? And um, this house that you see here is actually the first property that I, that I wholesaled. Um, and it came with its own set of challenges because this is the first time I ever had to do an e easement. It was actually the only time, but my first deal, I don't know anything about real estate and the guy that's willing to sell me this house wants me to do an easement. And so I was like, well, I guess I'll figure that out. And so that picture there is where he wanted to do the easement because um, he had a tractor and he also owned that land uh, that was an orchard and he wanted to get his tractor through on that easement. And so luckily I was attending real estate meetups because I had to consume as much as I could. You know, I had to be around people that were doing this thing called real estate, you know, and uh, luckily I met a real estate attorney and I brought this to her and she was able to make it happen. And so it was so important just going to those meetings, whether, you know, whether you think you're going to get anything out of them or not, those, those are key because like the saying goes, your network is your net worth. And so that, that was a, uh, that was a hurdle and we, we got it done. So I actually, uh, yep. Network is your net worth. Yep. And so right there, um, the, I did about five wholesale deals after this. I, I, uh, wholesaled them to the same investor. And finally I was interested in doing it myself because I didn't want to keep finding these properties for somebody else. I wanted, I wanted to do more, you know? Um, I, I asked him, I, I said, do you, do you know anybody that'd be willing to lend to me with, you know, no experience? Yeah. Um, however, you do know that I can, you know, I know the numbers, the numbers I, I'm making you lots of money off these, you know, wholesale deals and you know it. <laughs> so he did uh, refer me to a lender and that's how I got started flipping my first house. And uh, it was a house that I lived in for five years. And um, to this day, is, it had been our best our best profit. I, I bought it in 2015 and we sold it in 2020 as the market started shooting up. Um, go to the, go to the next slide. Yep. I started the first, this is our house here. Um, this was, this is where we lived. It, it was on an acre and a quarter, which was awesome. But then that is what we turned it into. Um, my, my wife actually is still kind of embarrassed of this, of this, uh, the after photo, because since we've done so many more, she sees all the things that she would have done differently, but, uh, it still came out. It was, it's a beautiful house. Um, it's awesome. So you, you were, you were talking about this the other day, but, um, uh, on the, the back right, uh, or the right side of that picture, you removed a wall and turned that, that room into a master. Yeah. So if you look at the old picture, um, it was kind of like a, a, a living room, um, den area and a another room and so we knocked that wall down we added a bathroom into there and a walk-in closet and it was just a, a large master suite um, walk-in shower you know everything so um, it was really a 
a, a good touch on this house. And so when you put it on the market, how long did it take to get a contract? Oh man, that was, this one was fast. So, and, uh, I, I want to say it was, this was two or three days. Um, wow. people, people were, especially this type of house that had an acre and a quarter in the city of Hanford. And it's not, it's not really common. So to have that at the, at the price that we were at. So I actually purchased this house for one, one fifty, um, in, in 2015. And so, you know, I, at the time I owed maybe like one thirty on it, but we sold it for three thirty, and, and with, uh, wow. roughly, I would say roughly $70,000 renovation, but, uh, it was, it was an awesome, awesome project and, and still our, our, our best flip yet. Now, but how did you find this house? This one, this one was on the market. Honestly, a lot of the houses we find have been on the market. Um, it, they're just the ones that are in poor shape and, you know, you make your offer based off of what you can, you know, what you would actually offer on it at whether it was a wholesale deal or not. And, that's and being on the market, you mean MLS, right? Yes. Yes. MLS. So, um, we've, gotten good luck on, on MLS, just making the offers. And if, you know, if they agree, then fine. At the end of the day, the way I see it too, is like, we're paying cash. We don't care about the condition. We don't want you to fix anything. Would you be willing to pay a little bit lower for cash and ease, you know, just, just to wash your hands of it and we'll take care of it, you know? Solve the problem. Yep. Solving a problem. This, this house here is, not not the it, this isn't in a cry, uh, chronological order or anything like that but um this i think was our fourth house that we flipped um and so you can see we we did make some bigger changes like the stove um we moved to another wall so we can kind of make it its own um its own uh viewpoint i guess um we did a whole cabinet wall in the back you can see there but uh this this was another another property that we got off the MLS. Um, the purchase price I remember was 215 and we sold this one for 340. Wow. And with a $60,000 renovation. Wow. Yep. Wow. Been through the contractors too. I, I, I went through probably, man, up to, up to that point, probably three contractors. <laughs> so awesome. this is Sanger. This was a, uh, this was a house that was, further away. And, and, you know, I told myself after this, I'm not doing another big house that's far away. And then here we did one in Fort Worth and uh, we said the same thing again, but no. um, this, this was a challenge. There was, we definitely, uh, we definitely overestimated it or I'm sorry, underestimated it. And uh, it was, it was a bigger beast than, uh, than what we thought. Um, but it came out beautiful. So it, on the next slide, you're going to see, you know, the changes that we had made. Wow. It, it was a beautiful house, but, um, definitely the, the, the travel time, you know, the getting materials over there, this is in a place called wonder Valley in California. That's, it's kind of like in the mountainous area, um, up, up more North. Um, but it, it's a beautiful area. They actually let the cows and the livestock just kind of, roam freely and so that's that's a it was a cool little cool little experience so do you have any particular challenges with this house or was it just pretty cut and dry yeah uh, this had a well and a septic and so we had to do some well repairs uh we had to do some septic repairs um that there, there was just kind of a lot of you know extra things that, that were issues here. It wasn't just, you know, cut and dry, flip the house type of thing. Um, but other than all that, like, I mean, those, those are costly things, you know, to fix, fix a well or fix a septic, you know, I'm sure you've, you've gone through that and right. that can be a make or break, you know, but luckily we did, uh, we did make some money off this, but, uh, not as much as we were hoping for when we got into that. So yeah. this here is actually um, one of our favorites as well. We turned it into an Airbnb 
and we top to bottom we we extended the uh some of the walk the pass-throughs there um mm -hmm. we made a lot of them archways and you can see the galley style kitchen my wife designed all that um but this was a pretty good performing airbnb um even in the uh even in the low season so this this turned out great i i'm pretty proud that i i did the uh I did the backyard there myself, so um, not not myself, but I, I designed it, you know, while my wife did the inside. She can get the glory for that, but um, I did the. Uh, oh, that wasn't the septic issue, right? No, 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 no. This is a this is a different house. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's an actual pond I wanted there. So. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Now this is your first Tyler flip. Yep. So what what made you? So you, you mentioned earlier you jumped from wholesaling to flipping because you just wanted to be more involved and, and you saw the money money into it. Yeah. So a big step. You picked up your family, loaded everybody up in the in the station wagon or whatever minivan. Yeah. Like the Beverly Hillbillies. What brought you to Texas? Uh man, a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. Um, so we wanted we knew we wanted to go to east texas specifically east texas um we wanted a place where it was green you know where we could have land for relatively cheap and i'm from upstate new york and i did not want to go back to um to the snow and that type of climate there um but i also i i enjoyed the heat but i didn't want to stay in california where it's dry you know there's no rain and so east texas was just it was just kind of like, you know, that was it. That's the, that's the gem for us. So I, I also had a buddy. He's, he's my best friend of this day. Um, I visited him in uh, San Antonio and I, I just thought it was incredible. I was like, man, this, I, I love everything about it. So um, we decided to look in East Texas. We want to be a little bit North. And the idea is honestly, we kind of picked a spot on the map. So we wanted, we did not want to live in a big city, but we wanted a place that was growing. And so Tyler just kind of happened to be that, that one place. And uh, the idea was jump into a house here and then we're going to figure out what house we're moving to next. That will be a, another investment essentially, but our forever house. So um, that's, that's actually one of our next steps there, but um, yeah. And the other thing that got us to move so quickly is our kids were starting school and we had to be here before they started school. We didn't, we didn't want them to go into school in California, you know, coming home and, you know, ask questioning their genders and stuff. So we went here and that was it. We Do you have any family in Texas. What's that? Do you have any family in Texas? We, we, we don't have anybody in Texas. <laughs> so wow. that, that was, that was the other, that's a, that's a pain point for us. But, uh, we make it work. We, we luckily real estate, you know, it's, it's very flexible. We can bring our kids, you know, and, uh, it's, that's what it is. So. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell, tell us about, um, let's, let's tell, tell, tell us about what's going on here. So, well, basically, uh, by the end of this year, um, we should hopefully be, at 20 flips um, since we started in 2020. Um, I I just kind of wanted to stress that your network is your net worth and attending those meetups is where you're gonna build your, your network, you know? Um, the first meetup I went to, I, I wasn't really thinking I was gonna take anything away from it. And sure enough, that one time, you know, you'll meet key individuals um, and if anything, they're, um, they have a network of their own, you know? And so it's so important to get out there and start meeting these people and providing value. And that's how, you know, that's how deals are done. That's how partnerships are formed. And, and on the next note, um, while you're, while you're, uh, in the real estate, while you're making successes and things like that, share it. Um, there's it, social media is extremely powerful and we, 
acquired a, a few private lenders through just posting some of our work saying, you know, showing before and afters and saying, if you would like to be a part of this, you know, hit me up and we can discuss terms and things like that. You know, people, people may not know, but this is an option for them instead of keeping their money in a bank. And uh, one thing we always stress is the power of staging. Um, and we actually have a story for that if we have time. Um, we were doing two side-by-side -side condos and they were mirror images. And uh, we staged one and we did not stage the other. And same, same building, but the feedback that we got was that they liked the one, but they did not like the other. Wow. And it's like, these are the same buildings. It's the same thing. We just staged one and we got that one sold. <laughs> and so we had to move the staging over to the next one. So our standard is we, we stage every property and we do it ourselves though. So that's, uh, that's kind of the, the thing there too. My, my wife is the brains behind all that. But uh, last but not least, I would say get uncomfortable. Um, comfort destroys ambition. And that is the key to all this. As you, you know, become successful or start uh, making these small successes, you're going, to, you're going to start getting comfortable and that could lead to being complacent. And I think, uh, I think that uh, trip to Cancun kind of re rewired it too. It's like, you know what, I'm starting to get comfortable. And so that's, that's why, you know, it's so important to not be in your comfort zone and, and bust out of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so this is uh this is incredible. This is an incredible journey for you. So, what's next what's next for you what what are you what are you looking getting uncomfortable is, is a key point there but what is what is your next big thing to transition into um well there, there we have a few things that we're we're looking to do um we're looking to uh we're actually hoping to close on our on our dream house that we're going to renovate into a, a spanish colonial hacienda uh, it has a lot of land and, and the idea is, you know, we start our, start our, uh, our, our dream house there, but, um, more importantly, um, we're transitioning into multifamily and the idea would be, you know, apartments, things like that, um, commercial real estate. And I, you know, Grant Cardone said, you know, you know why would you, put the effort, put the energy into single family homes when you could put the same energy and effort into multifamily. And that really hit me. I was like, you know what? That's, that's very true. You know, it's same energy. You design one and you can do them all, you know? So. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Thanks. So what are you, what are you hoping to pass on to your children as, as you build this industry for you? Well, um, just a, a good work ethic. Um, I want them to, you know, to know the, the value and, and the power of real estate and, and making connections with, you know, with people. And I want, I want them to have their own rentals and own interest in um, real estate before they get out, of, get out of high school. That's kind of um, mm -hmm. my goal as, as a father to, you know, leave them with something that they can then, you know, handle themselves. But it's especially today, I think it's so important. You have to have, you know, streams of income that whether, whether they want to go out and, you know, be doctors or car mechanics, you know, who, who cares? I, I really don't care what they, what they do as long as they're happy doing it, but I, I want real estate to be in their portfolios, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's kind of uh, how I see it going down. Well, wow. So you, I, I think, I think you mentioned you've got three, properties you're doing right now? Yes. I have, I have two that are side by side in Tyler. Um, we just listed the one that was in Fort Worth. Um, and we have one that should be, we should be finishing it up here. It's actually this house that we're staying in. Mm -hmm. um, it was the one that we came here in and uh, it's been a, it's been a slow flip, you know, having four kids and it's it's a uh, it's a process. I feel like sometimes we're just taking steps backwards, but 
Um, but no, it, it's great. Um, but after this, um, we're hoping we're hoping to close, like I said, on, on the the Spanish hacienda style house there. Um, and yeah, that will. That's it. That's that's it right now. Oh, and also, I almost forgot we have a we have a smaller flip here in Tyler as well um, that we'll, we'll probably make into a rental. It's very it's like a little uh, little house kind of. It's not really North Tyler. It's uh, eastish. I'm sorry, westish. Um, but should should be a pretty good one. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, what a great story that is, and. Um, so most of your most of your funding comes from private lenders, is that right? Okay, Correct. We left that out. Yeah, uh, private lenders. I have used a, a hard money lender before. I, you know, it's great. Um, any way you can you can get into projects is is great. Um, but I, I personally wasn't a fan of the draw system because you know I need it when I need it. You know, and so um, I do appreciate the the private lending aspect of, you know, this is, this is what, you know, this is what I'm going to give you. This is the percent and you'll have this back in, you know, X amount of days or weeks or, or whatever the, the duration is. I like just the kind of freedom that that provides. So, um, and I think it's it, having that too is important. Um, if you have a, a track record, you know, you, I don't expect people to just drop you money and you know you don't have anything to show for it so um, yeah. that's, that's definitely important so but awesome awesome well i, I tell you what uh, nick this is a this is a great story it's really fun to watch this yeah. happen in, in my career almost 20 years in this i've watched this happen so many times and how so many people have changed the legacy in their life of where they were going to be and it's uh it, it was great that somebody uh, it was unfortunate, but it was great that somebody made a mistake on on an airplane and caused you to have to go look at other other areas there. And, and a lot of us come from from entrepreneurships. So I think your dad owned a flooring store, and a yeah. lot of us come from from that type of environment. Of uh, you know, sometimes we have to we, sometimes we have to dig in our console for some change to to make that deposit in the bank to cover that oh, check yeah. that we have out there. Yeah. So, um, and I'm I'm looking forward to watching your business grow. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Thanks, hope to have you on again to share some more success stories and yes, uh, some, some, uh, I, I love to see the before and after pictures. Uh, you've got a great video on one of, on, on that Tyler house that you, you, we just showed um, before and after on that, that your um, videographer did. And uh, that is just absolutely superior on that. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for being on here tonight. Did you have anything to close out with? No. Um, Thank, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. This is, uh, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully I can have more and, and better content for you next time. And uh, we'll try to get some videos worked in here. So All right. you know, it's more, more, uh, more to the eye. That'll work. That'll work. Nick, thank you so much. We will see you next time. And uh, thank you everybody for being on here tonight and uh, uh, watching this as a, uh, as a recording in the future. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye. See you later.